All right, in this video, I kind of want to do a little discussion, a little bit of an introductory disc discussion on the psychoanal psychoanalytic thought of Sigmund Freud. Um, I haven't really done a whole lot about psychoanalysis on my channel. Um, if you want a lot of good stuff about Lacan and Slavoj Žižek, Ch Chad Afgren, he's... In my, in, in my opinion, he's the best person on YouTube to go watch his videos on Jacques Lacan, as well as uh, Slavoj Žižek, and he also has great videos on Freud and many, many other philosophers and, and thinkers. Um, personally, I don't have really any videos. This is, this, is the fir this is the first one. Well, it's my, my second one besides my one on Deleuze and Guattari, which I made, I made recently, so... <clears throat> this I want to just kind of give some in, um, some introductory little um, things about Freud's psychoanalysis. Now he has many many books, which I'm I, in the future I really want to get into his book Beyond the Pleasure Principle, Totem and Taboo, um, and other things um, that he has written and other concepts that that he has that I would like to that I would like to uh, get into. And I'd also like to get into Jacques Lacan. Um, I think Lacan is harder, more difficult. The book that I have of his is the four four fundamental concepts of uh, of uh, psychoanalysis. Again, Chad Afgren is the one of is the one to go to about Lacan. Now I would I would like to make some videos on him in the in, in the future. So, on to Freud. Um, what is psycho? analysis. What that is, it's like a, it's a process, it's, it's a practical process, which people like Freud and Lacan and even Jung did t to an extent to sort of explain people's behavior and to bring out the, what is what, this is what Freud calls the unconscious. Now, Lacan has his own things and Jung is a different kind of thinker, a different kind of psych psychological thinker, which I would also love. I would also love to get into. But Freud believed in what is called the unconscious. Um, we are all mental, and uh, that there we all have mental and and psychotic factors that are conscious or unconscious. Um, and the way that we behave, there is a explanation for it. A lot some of it is conscious, but there are a lot there's a realm of the of the unconscious that is in, that is inside of all of us. And I'm gonna in a minute here I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about the three kinds of three kinds of things of the three kinds of minds that he talk, talks about the id, the, the ego and the superego. But there is a unconscious um, there's a unconscious um, realm or uh, dimension that is that is inside of us that inside of every single one of us that can explain the way that the way that the way that we behave now that could be explained a little better um, I think you know I'm not very good at explaining this psychological stuff but it does it is pertinent to to philosophy that's why I want to get into this um, and behavior the be behavior that we all have is a result of what is unconscious in us and the process of psychoanalysis is to bring that out and to kind of understand that to understand the unconscious dimensions that are in us in order to understand the way that we behave. <clears throat> now, people like B.S. Skinner, who was a behaviorist psychologist, didn't think of things this way. He thought of that he thought that behavior was the only thing that we had to, that we had to look at in order to understand the human psyche and to understand uh, what, what goes to, to to understand the the psychological processes of a person. And that's kind of more of a empirical way of going about it. Like, uh, a, a, a empiricist wouldn't be a Freudian. A, a, 
a empiricist wouldn't try to acknowledge a unseen, unconscious thing that is inside of a human person that we can bring out through through psycho uh, psychoanalysis. And a, a problem what that was that, that that was with this with Freud and Lacan was that um and this whole thing did kind of fail to to an extent um was that incorrect con- incorrect con- conclusions were were made as a result of psychoanalytic therapy or psych- or psychoanalytic investigation of any one person incorrect c- conclusions were made of any of any given person, so that's a reason why a lot of this kind of failed to an extent. It still does have pertinence in philosophy, uh, per particularly post post structuralist philosophy and and continental philosophy of today in this last century, uh, which is why I want to know, it's which is why I want to discuss it. Um, so, what is the Freudian slip? Or the parapraxis. It's an it's an error in speech, memory, or action, which is interpreted as occurring due to interference of the un, of the of the un, of the un, unconscious. <coughs> so, an error in behavior or thought, which is would be interpreted by Freud as um, because of the unconscious interfering with the conscious. Um, and in a way, this is, you know, trying to look at mistakes and errors and misgivings, you know, looking at all the mistakes and errors of that one has, you know, uh, looking at them and, you know, thinking deep into that, and that's what the process of psychoanalysis is. Now, a lot of this, you know, a lot of this kind of points to what Freud thought of religion, and that pretty much was that religion is a, a is a illusory thing that a mind brings up in order to cope with a lot of the things of one's life. Um, that's kind of something I wanted to mention. I would like to make a more in depth video on that later. Um, so, what are the three kinds of, I guess, egos or three kinds of parts of the mind? First of all, we have the id, which is a part of the unconscious that that, that that seeks pleasure. It's a pleasure-seeking kind of um, thing that we all have. Um, and explains why people act in a, in a certain way and that, that, that doesn't align with the ego. Though the id is just like this thing inside of us that looks after pleasure all the, all, all, all the time. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure-seeking me- mechanism. And it, it, it's a unconscious thing too and it kind of explains why well according to um, people like Freud it can explain why people act in ways that that don't align with the ego now what is the ego it creates a balance between pleasure and pain you know it kind of keeps the id in check Um, it's um not possible for all of the desires and the needs of the id to be met. The id has many, many pleasures that it, you know, seeks. And it's not possible for the, for all those to be met. <coughs> it's not possible for all of those to be had and met. Um, so the ego keeps that in check and keeps that in, ba- keeps that in balance. And uh, it... Um, it operates to satisfy the id, but also to compromise it with reality. <coughs> so, the ego is the bodily entity that we all have and, and are, um, and it keeps that id in check and kind of compromise it. it. It kind of gives the id what it wants on, on one side, but only on, on the other side it compromises the id's wants with what can really occur. Um, the superego, which is developed by age four or five, um, it incorporates the morality of society. The id and the ego don't have any kind of moral norms built 
into them. But as these super ego develops, there's a, there's a moral aspect to how it lives, or to, or to how it how it is. So that's kind of a brief intro to kind of what psychoanalysis is, at least for Freud. Now I, I want to do a similar video about Lacan. Um, hopefully, after I've read the rest of his um, Lacan's four fundamental concepts. But if you have if you have, if you have, if you have, if you have a question or, or or you think I left something out or mess or mess something up, cut, cut, comment below. And uh, thank you.